Greetings, everyone. Welcome to ENE Learning Hub. I'm going to go through and explain the solutions for question five from the 2022 CSEC Electrical and Electronic Pass paper. All right, so let's begin. Part one of A. It says identify the two most common materials that are used to manufacture semiconductor diodes. So the two materials are silicon and germanium. All right, so that's it for part one of A. For part two, it says identify the two states in which a semiconductor diode may be biased by a DC voltage source. The two states are forward bias and reverse bias. All right, so that's it for part two of B. For part three, it says a semiconductor diode is often referred to as being equivalent to a single pole, single throw switch. With the aid of a simple sketch, explain the condition under which this statement may be considered true for an ideal semiconductor diode. All right, so let's look at when the diode is operating in forward bias first. So here we have a two diagram. So we have a diagram of the diode when it is operating in forward bias, all right? And we also have a diagram when the switch is in the closed position. So when the diode is operating in the forward bias, it allows current to flow through it. As a result of this, a single pole, single throw switch is seen as an equivalent to the diode because once the switch is closed, it will allow current to flow through it. All right, so that's it for forward bias. For reverse bias, here I have the two diagrams. So one for the diode in reverse bias and one with the switch in an open position. So when the diode is operating in reverse bias, it does not allow current to flow through it. As a result of this, the single pole single throw switch is seen as an equivalent to the diode because once the switch is open, it will not allow current to flow through it. All right, so that's it for reverse bias. And that's it for part A. All right, so let's move on to part B now. It says figure one and two show the relay logic diagrams for two logic control circuits with the inputs A and B and output Y controlling an AC motor. Part one of B, it says identify the type of logic control circuit shown in figure one. All right, so that logic control circuit is an AND gate. And how oh, do I know this? All right, so let's look at the circuit. Now, if you were to press the push button here, a path for current to flow will be created to the coil labeled A right here. All right, so once this coil is energized, Anything else in the circuit that is labeled A will be affected by this coil being energized. So this normal open contact here that is labeled A will now become closed. All right, so the fact that it is closed, it will not allow any current to flow just the same through this part because normal open contact B here is still open. All right, so let's go to the second push button now. So if you were to press the second push button, this time that is labeled B, a path for current to flow will be created through the coil labeled B. And as a result, the coil will become energized. All right, so anything that is labeled B in the circuit will also be affected when coil B here becomes energized. So it means that this normally open contact here will become closed. Still, there's a opening in the circuit here at the normally open contact labeled A, it is open. So it means that no current will flow through this part of the circuit. But if you were to press both switch A and switch B at the same time, Coil A and coil B become energized as a result of that. The normal open contact A and B will now close. As a result of these two contacts now closing, the coil here that is labeled Y 
will become energized because a powerful current to flow will be created as a result of that. The normal open contact here that is labeled Y will now close and the motor will start to operate. All right, so in order for the circuit to be fully closed for the motor to operate, both switch must be closed. Or in other words, there must be an I for both inputs. So if you look back at the true table for the AND gate, whenever you have an I output is when you have two I inputs. All right. Now for part two, it says identify the type of logic control circuit shown in figure two. All right. So for figure two, that is a R gate. All right. So let's look at it. When the push button labeled A is pressed, the coil labeled A will be energized as a result of the path for current to flow being created. Now, when the coil is energized, anything that is labeled A in the circuit will be affected. So it means that this normally open contact here will now close. Once this contact is closed, a path for current to flow will be created and the coil here labeled Y will become energized. Anything that is labeled Y in the circuit will also be affected. So it means that this normally open contact here will now close. As a result of that, the motor will turn on. All right. If you press B this time, a path for current to flow will be created and the coil labeled B here will be energized. Once this coil is energized, anything else in the circuit that is labeled B will be affected. So it means that this normally open contact here will no close, which will create a path for current to flow through the coil here labeled Y. Anything that is labeled Y will be affected once this coil is energized. So once this coil labeled Y is energized, then the normal open contact here labeled Y will close, which in turn energizes the motor. All right, so if we were to look back at the true table for the R gate, right? So remember the operation is uh, addition. If A is I, which means that A is one R, the switch here is closed, and B is zero, you will get an I output. And so I, when A is pressed and B is still open, the circuit is closed and the motor turns on. Again, if B is closed, which gives an I and A remain open, which is a low, the motor will energize because the circuit will close. If both switches remain open, the motor will not energize because the circuit is open. But if both switches were pressed, then you'll have an I input at A and B and the circuit will be closed and that will result in an I output, meaning the motor right here will be energized. All right, so that's it for part two of B. All right, so let's move on to part three. It says, sketch using a standard digital logic symbol and equivalent logic circuit for the relay logic control circuit shown in figure one. Indicate the inputs and the outputs of the logic gate. This equivalent circuit here is the equivalent circuit for figure one. So here we have the logic gate with two inputs A and B and a output Y. And here we have the relay coil and the normal open contact. All right, so that's it for part three. For part four, it says sketch using a standard digital logic symbol and equivalent logic circuit for the relay logic control circuit shown in figure two. Indicate the inputs and the outputs of the logic gate. All right, so here is the equivalent circuit for figure two. So here we have the R gate with two inputs A and B and the output Y. So here we have the relay coil and we have the normally open contact. So that's it for part four of B and that's it for this question.